let's throw it on over to our next run. Uh, hi, my name is Carmen Dragonus, and with me we have the ever lovely Glitchwitch. Hi, everybody. And uh, I'll not waste too much time here. We'll go ahead and do a countdown, and then we'll get into things here. Uh, so time will start in three, two, one, go. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so this is Kokoron. It's a really whimsical sort of dream world, build your own character game. And from what I saw, it looked like Flame won the bid war for the first head. Ooh. Okay, so no skull, skull dragon. Yeah, okay, so there's three different heads we can use for each type, and normally I would use the skull head, but figured why not leave it up for donations. So this is our character, it has a ghost head, a wing body, which lets us fly quite a bit, and it shoots shurikens, which do a lot of damage. Obviously I wouldn't be messing around in that little practice area if it was the speed run. Uh, well, <laughs> record attempt, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> this is a speed run still. <laughs> this currently qualifies as a speed run. Uh, basically, what you make your character out of, uh, the given parts and everything, will determine your stats, how long you can fly, if you can even fly, if you can hover, uh, how much health you have, and how quickly your character moves. So we, we basically make kind of this little all-purpose flying ability uh, thing that can actually deal a lot of damage to get through our early areas of the game. Mm -hmm. Or rather, most of the game. Yeah. We're going to use this character on any stage with a boss, effectively. <laughs> that was a little bit closer to the ship than I usually like. Oh, gosh. It. <laughs> yeah. Um, for reference, that boat, when you only have, like, the one health bar and maybe a little bit of extra a little bit, uh, that boat will just one-shot you if it touches you. So if you are a dragon with a flame head, do not touch pirate boats is the lesson that we can take off of this. Very important lesson. Uh, and from what I saw, it looked like uh, Pumpkin and Smiley Face won the rest, so I guess we'll just make the other characters as usual. So no clown faces? No clown faces. We, <laughs> we are freed from the cursed characters. So this so is Happy Quacky, as we dub them. If you want to go ahead and explain, go ahead. So basically, this character is ultra light, can fly for a really long time, and uh, under no circumstances should be used under any, uh, except for just uh, flying. And we're going to use it on two very, two to three very three. specific levels. Yeah. Three. That's it. I guess and, four. Uh, you count the egg. I mean, I would count the egg, but it's it's just going to give us the traversal speed to get through those levels very quickly, and also let us fly for like way too long. Yeah. The speed on that, since it's so lightweight, is just ridiculously good. So if you're watching right now, you're probably just like, okay, this is this little platformer. What you might not have noticed, you're making your own characters. As well, you get to pick the order of the levels that you go from. And uh, basically every level has a different connecting level to the another level. So if you go from here to the Milk Sea, it's going to look different from if you went from here to the, uh, the mountain. So there's a lot of unique content built in this game that you probably won't see. We're coming up on our first, uh, second boss here. And uh, this one, unfortunately, we can't kill just immediately. We need to wait out all of these spades. Or some of them are clubs, I guess, but mostly spades. So we're just going to wait this out and try to get these um, as killed as quickly as possible. The real speed is to kill the last one fast because that will progress to the next phase rather than waiting for everything to just go off screen. And if you do miss everything, you can uh, hang out on the right side. Yeah. The, uh, the, oh, sorry, if you're counting. The, the gist of this is we're um, the king in this castle has been kidnapped by the Joker. So we'll see all the cards except for the king and we'll get to the Joker and probably fill the Joker published uh, shurikens, hopefully. If everything goes as planned, at least. Yeah, we'll see about that. Easy peasy. Here yeah, so... <laughs> yes, that's easy really, peasy indeed. The uh, spades always come out in the same pattern, so as long as you get like the last one or two, you save a good chunk of time. All right, so the final character we're going to make here is Pumpkin Boat, and I'll mention this one since I actually added this to the speed run. Um, the boats are good because they can stay on top of water, or in this case, milk, because there's no water in this game, only milk. <laughs> 
Yes, there uh, are uh, literal no water. There's milk, and there's stuff that looks like orange juice or uh, like purple drink that you kind of just fall through it. It's not actually a liquid. Yeah. I think. So next we're going to head up to Fire Ice Mountain, which this is a stage that's pretty short, but it looks quite good when you uh, optimize it. It just feels really nice to blast through this stage. This is, um, is this the stage I'm thinking of? Yes, this stage is super good. It's one of my favorites. Just lots of elephants and flying fish working together to try to ruin your speed run. Yep. And a lot of precarious <laughs> pits everywhere <laughs> that, like, you can fly all, all uh, you can fly over them, but you just gotta remember, like, when you're about to run out of flight. The best so part is, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. Here's Santa trapped in a block of ice um, <laughs> by a very big mean dragon, but it turns out it's just a nice sculpture of a dragon. A very big a mean dragon, dragon. Has, a, has, a, has a secret to it, and it's a tiny dragon. <laughs> and for this boss, we're pretty much just going to get inside of its hitbox and spam shurikens, and uh, you take less damage from the body of the dragon than you do from the shots of the dragon. Yeah, it's worth noting we got pretty good luck there, because occasionally that dragon will just decide, no, I want to go off and live in the sky, and you just can't hit it. You want the dragon to be uh, either not moving up or just going as low as possible. The, the low Actually, dragon is what you want. You can actually avoid that by not continuing to shoot shurikens once the ice sculpture is dead. Ooh, the minutes that I did not know. And this is why Karma is the world record holder, and I am not under 16 minutes yet. Funny story about that. I was actually practicing this game um, last weekend. I think it was on Saturday, three days ago, it would have been. That sounds like yeah. three days ago. So I was just kind of practicing this game in my very first run of the night. I was just doing really well and noticing that I was doing pretty well. And I just kept going and oops, world record. Improved it by four seconds. Also, yes, those were just eclairs in front of pink whales and just, yeah, this is Kokoron, welcome. Yeah, the, of any place in this game that calls the most questions to it, it's probably the whales and the eclairs. Uh, this is Harvest Moon, popular video game franchise or boss that has stars that is also a moon. Oh, the left side there is a lot safer than it looks. It's very spooky. As long as you get all the way on the left side, uh, you're safe. The main thing about Harvest Moon is that the stars, while they're rotating around it, will kill you instantly, but if you get hit by a shooting star, you're fine. You just take, like, four damage. So the, the biggest question I see is some people talking about the uh, the bedtime Tapir in chat. Tapir is uh, the master of this dream world, and he is the one that is telling us to make new allies and characters as he guides us to try to find uh, the kidnapped princess Coco Roan. I think it was Rua. Or wait, Rua. no. Wait. Was, I don't think Rua is kidnapped yet. I don't remember. <laughs> I, should, I should play another round with the uh, English translation of this and remember the plot. I think we're looking for Kokorin. No, we're not. We're looking for Kokorin. I think we're going to find Kokorin first. Maybe that's I, how it goes. There's a lot of characters that sound alike. And here's some yeah. math in the background. Basically, Tapir is our friend at the moment, and theoretically forever, right? Like Tapir is always friend. going to be our friend. I don't understand. What is this? No, there's no betrayal in this video game. We're spoiling it. No, we're spoiling nothing. It's not going to happen. Yeah. I trust Tapir completely. <laughs> That's my complete, total, and implicit trust. So here's Titania. She's a really easy boss. Um, it really doesn't take that much to take her down. You just gotta get up in her face and mash buttons. She is one of my favorite bosses. Coincidentally, yeah. the first boss I ever fought when I was playing this game blind. Coincidentally, you also mash really well. <laughs> Oh, so I can. Oh, she still dies on one teleport. You know, it's fine. <laughs> this uh, this is a really fun game, and I do recommend playing it if you're looking at it and say, "What is this?" It is awesome. Okay, so I think that was Coco Rin right there that we just rescued, and now it appears letting us create one more character to keep building this wonderful dream. No motives. No motives whatsoever. 
And, uh, oh, right. Oh, shoot, I should have issued a flashing warning. I'm sorry. You probably figured out by now, but this game has a lot of flashing, and there's about to be some more right here. Spring Ninja. Ooh, bold choice. We will never be seeing that character in the game being played. So it turns out Tapir's evil and is actually the Dream Eater Baku. I can't believe that Tapir is evil. Right? I feel so betrayed. I mean, I constantly feel betrayed since I played this game blind. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you did make Clown Boat. <laughs> the game the most towards. cursed creature in the game. <laughs> So there, there's a cursed thing you can make in this game. It makes no difference. It's just our friend group does not like to use it. And um, I made it out of curiosity and for fun, and the game crashed on me, so I know never to do it again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so here's Princess Rua. Um, she's always in that egg right there between the fairy forest and the milk sea. So no matter what you do, you always want to end up in one of those two stages last. And surprise, all of our party members have been kidnapped by Tapir. So now we only have this happy quacky character. Which is perfect, because we need them for these specific stages. And between each of these levels, we're going to rescue one character at a time until we have our full roster back. And then we're going to dispense some fun shuriken justice on Tapir. Probably. Probably. Hopefully. That, that is the goal. It's also worth noting there's a gauntlet of about five stages coming up, and if we die in any of them, not game over, just die at all, you go back all the way to the beginning of, um, of this stage gauntlet. For new players, this is quite a wall, and this is a very mean section of the video game. But if y'all just use the speedrun strat, it'll be great. Yeah. Until Arizona. Mm-hmm. Or Texas, or Nevada, or whatever. <laughs> Place with cacti. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so this next stage is definitely a lot scarier than it looks. Um, well, it, it's less scary than it looks once you actually uh, play it a decent amount. These flowers, you can jump on them when they're open, but the main thing to note is that they will not close again until you jump off of them. So you can hang out on them as long as you need to. So shout out to the upside down face every time uh, your character gets hit when it's got the happy face. It is my favorite <laughs> little bit of sprites. <laughs> Can we get some upside down smiley faces in the chat? <laughs> so we are rescuing some things. That's the scariest level in the game for new players, only followed by the uh, the next stage which we're going to use our boat for the one time we're going to use this state, or use this character. Because we have some milk to traverse. You can take about two hits on the cacti before you die, so jumping here very, very uh, accurately is yeah. extremely important. If you have to take a hit, make sure you take it from the fish because they do a lot less damage than the cactus does. Yeah, and you can use your iframes to get over the thing. Thankfully, this last stage is pretty free. We're just going to take our, our little shuriken derg here and just kind of uh, have a nice little walk through here. Yeah, these spooky levels jumping. are gone. Yeah. There's a bit of slowdown, but we're mostly just going to traverse this stage, get to the end, and then there's some uh, fun, exciting uh, content. Did you just say content? I absolutely did use the word content in 2020. <laughs> I'm thinking about that content. <laughs> so here's Cocoron. But now... Or wait, no, I think this is still Cocoron again? I don't remember, because I think we rescued Cocoron after this. Here's a fairy. Yes. <laughs> Shrug I up. need to go play the English version of this again. <laughs> so Tapir here is an egg-throwing machine. And every time you hit them, they shoot out a few eggs in retaliation. And you'll notice sometimes I'm getting two shurikens in instead of just one. Normally, as soon as you hit with one, they go invincible. But if you time it just right, you can sometimes sneak in two. Here's Kokoron for real, who is going to have us go stop to peer once and for all. So... We're going into the last stage here. And this was our first checkpoint in quite some time. Yeah. 
Now it's actually safe for us to game over. That hit was slightly unfortunate, but we'll be fine. This it is just not... means there's maybe a penguin later music. I have to be a little bit more careful about. Yeah, this, this may be my favorite music in the game. Something about yeah. the little sheep lamb things dancing to it with the, with the cheerleading pom-poms. These are the cutest enemies in the game by far. They also take a ton of hits if you're actually trying to hurt them. Yeah, and if you touch them, they do an entire full bar of health, like these flames, which is why I'm being careful around these. Whoopsie. Take out the penguin, make sure we're okay. But yeah, I have uh, one hit from a minor enemy routed into this stage. So we can still take three hits from Tapir 2 here and be fine. And Tapir 2 here is quite dangerous if you want to talk about it at all. Um, Tapir 2 is a lot like Tapir 1, except more. So this is extra Tapir, and uh, he's going to shoot out five of these eggs instead of just three at a very dodgeable pattern. And uh, we want to try to keep him stunlocked again, and uh, which he hasn't done yet so far. If you do give him a moment, oh, there he goes. We'll start throwing eggs at you in a weird pattern and start bouncing them. And uh, he'll yep. keep doing that until he gets hit again. Um, yeah, he, he is, he's mean and rude and bad, and sometimes he just he just decides he's going to win. Yep. But mostly you're going to see the same strategy. Karma's going to be jumping up and throwing two, uh, two shurikens at him, hopefully nailing with both. I think settling for one is definitely great, but it's it's, it's survivable. Here we go. Okay, uh, time's going to be when the music stops, so I will call it in just a sec here. Nice fight. Time. And that's GG. That was awesome. A 1623, I think, is below my PB. To just casually pull that out in a marathon, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely happy with how that went. And this game, because it was forward-thinking, also includes in-game time, which is all yeah. the way at the end of the credits. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm not going to expect us to wait around for the in-game time <laughs> at the end here. But yeah, Kokoron is a really great game to play casually, a really good speedrun. I highly recommend picking it up if you're looking for a good platforming speed game. This uh, game could always use some more love. It is quite a fun game. It's super short. It's not that difficult to uh, learn. It is much harder to get a great time in it. But, uh, you know, I believe in you. I keep, I, I, I believe in you in chat, you specifically, all of you. And uh, y'all can join this Code Grown speedrunning community because we can't seem to get anyone to stick with it. It pops up <laughs> for things every now and then and they run it once or twice and then give up or get mad at Tapir. We need <laughs> more long-term runners of this video game. <laughs> To also, peer two is how you end friendships. <laughs> also, with our fun little project of uh, randomizing the character creation yeah. and having to anyway. run through the game that way. <laughs> uh, should we go ahead and pass it back over? Yeah, that was Kokoron. Thank you so much for watching. And um, Carmen, if you've got any closing remarks, thanks for having me. Thanks, y'all. I think we're gone. Great run, Karma. I love that game. It's such great music. Yeah. I guess should we hop back down in like green room two? Karma is going to be back later for the Battle of Olympus. We do have a mid war for the character name and girlfriend's name for that. So if you want to name the character in the Battle of Olympus, get your donation in. You can name both the character name and the girlfriend's name. It is a tight race between Cheese and Melly right now.
remember to try to get your donations in for that Battle of Olympus character name Bid War. And then later on tonight, our first bonus game of Oblivion. I believe we're at $1,477. That's going to be a great run if we can get that incentive met. Remember that our donations are supporting Malala Fund. Malala Fund is working for a world where every girl can learn and lead. With more than 130 million girls out of school today, they're breaking down barriers that hold girls back through investing in local education activists, advocating to hold leaders accountable, and amplifying girls' voices. Remember, you can also donate by purchasing a shirt from the Yeti. The Yeti is donating $5 per Frost Fatale shirt sold to Malala Fund. You can find these shirts at theyeti.com. I think we are just about ready for our next game. I'm playing Hyperlight Drifters. <laughs> 